Do you ever feel like seconds after you apply for a job, you get a rejection email? And submit. How are recruiters rejecting us so quickly? And sometimes in the middle of the night? Reject. It's not you, it's your resume and recruiters hate it. Let's talk about why recruiters hate your resume so much and how to make them love it instead. Oh my eyes. <sighs> recruiters can't stand flashy resume formats and templates. As one of my recruiter friends put it, don't make me go on a treasure hunt for your qualifications. Flashy resume formats essentially give the finger to conventional resume formats which leaves the recruiter guessing where they should be looking for important information. What do we mean by flashy formats or templates? We're talking about the ones that you may be paying for that are on Etsy, or the ones that you're crafting on Canva, or curating on Pinterest. Pretty little things that look more like an infographic rather than a resume. For more on the truth about these resume templates, check out this video here, which I have linked in the description below. We can fix this and get recruiters moving towards loving our resume by moving away from the flash and towards simplicity. We want our resume, which is a document, to read as a document. So that means following formatting expectations, using the full width of the page, and resisting the urge to add images just for aesthetic sake. I have a whole playlist on how to format your resume, including some tutorials that show you the exact structure that I use for my own clients. I've linked this playlist in the description below. Mm, this list of keywords really tells me nothing. Recruiters hate keywords without context. The value of keywords is often overestimated and the use of keywords in resumes is often poorly executed. What are keywords? Keywords are basically key terms that are included in a job posting. So if we think of an example like a sales representative job posting, some keywords that that might include would be sales, customer service, and relationship building. These words can support your resume, but only when they're backed up with context. The mistake we often see job seekers making is throwing a bunch of keywords into their resumes without backing them up. Keywords are only as valuable as their context. Without context, you're just saying a word. So how can we move your resume towards being loved by recruiters? You can still use keywords on your resume, but you do need to make sure that you back them up with context. So if you're using keywords in your skill section of your resume, make sure that you are backing them up with demonstrating how you used those skills in the accomplishments that you share in your work experience or professional experience section of your resume. So back to our example of a sales representative, if we're going to use sales as a keyword, we can back that up with an accomplishment that highlights the amount of sales growth or revenue growth we've achieved. If we want to emphasize the customer service keyword, we can use an accomplishment maybe backed by a customer satisfaction survey and the results of that. For more information on how to actually write accomplishments in your resume, check out this video. Great. Another detail-oriented team player. Recruiters hate worthless descriptive words. While we're on the topic of words, let's talk about the use of adjectives or descriptive words. As job seekers, it's common for us to fall into the trap of or feel pressured to use certain adjectives that we see a lot of other people using on their resumes. But when we do that, we're just going to sound like everybody else and we won't stand out from the crowd. Further, a lot of these words don't really provide recruiters with any valuable information. Words that add little value include terms like detail-oriented, team player, seasoned, respected, experienced, self-motivated, problem solver. This list is getting a bit long, so it could be its own video or downloadable. If you want to be notified about when that video or downloadable is available, Make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell to get notifications. So how can we move our resume towards being loved by recruiters in place of those vague, general, and overused descriptive words? Talk more about you specifically and the unique value that you bring to the table. 
particularly in the context of the job to which you're applying. So this might include things like if you're a salesperson, your ability to generate millions of dollars in new revenue by building and executing sales strategies. Or if you're in project management, you could talk about your strength in steering tech projects that enable organizations to enter new markets. Or maybe you're in UX and you could talk about delivering UX that allows customers to engage in more depth with the products that they use. Or if you're making a career change, you could talk about the industry or profession that you're coming from and how that will make a difference in the role that you're targeting. WTF is AVIF. Recruiters hate resumes that are abundant with acronyms. Acronyms might save you some time at work, but they could waste some time for recruiters. Or worse, your use of certain acronyms, if they're not widely known, may cause the recruiter to get completely lost and move on to the next resume. This is particularly a mistake I see a lot in technical resumes. We think that acronyms used in our day-to-day -day work are universal outside of our organization, but sometimes that's not the case. Organizations will often make up their own acronyms, which leads to a communications barrier. But maybe the recruiter doesn't know the acronym even if it is used in your industry because they're not immersed in your work day in and day out. So how can we get your resume down the road of being loved by recruiters? Don't get between yourself and the job that you want because you're trying to shorten words. Before using any acronym, ask yourself, does this acronym help support the qualification that I'm trying to explain here? If the answer is no, then try to find another simplified way to explain what you want the reader to understand. But if yes, and an acronym does work in the situation, does support your qualification, or there's absolutely no way to avoid using an acronym here, you first must establish the acronym by spelling it out and putting the acronym in brackets. As an example, I'll give you one of my favorite acronyms that I learned when I was in FinTech and that's GUI. So if I'm using GUI in a resume, the first or only instance where I use GUI in my resume, I'm going to spell it out as graphic user interface and then put GUI in brackets. I can see that you're definitely skilled in copy and paste. Recruiters hate resumes that are a job description dump. Job descriptions are inherently boring and also inherently poorly written. It's very rare that a job description properly captures the scope of your job and does so in a way that doesn't make the recruiter want to take a nap. But even worse, job descriptions don't give the recruiter or hiring manager a clear idea or picture in their mind of how you demonstrate the skills that they want from you. So if job descriptions suck, why would we want to use them as the bulk of our resume? We wouldn't, yet some of us do. So how can we help recruiters love our resume instead? You can briefly summarize the core mandate and core objectives of your role in a very short paragraph for each role on your resume. Emphasis on the short paragraph. We don't want to spend too much time or use too much space on our resume just explaining duties because that takes away from the space that we can use to highlight accomplishments that demonstrate us using the skills that are required and desired of us from our target job. Check out this video on how to build your work experience section on your resume. I've also linked it in the description below. And for how to write accomplishments, check out this video also linked in the description below. Uh, lots of this means nothing to me. Recruiters hate resumes full of irrelevant information. So we know that we need to share information on our resume that shows how we've demonstrated the skills that are required or desired of us in our target role. In short, we need to show that we're qualified and recruiters need to find the most qualified person for the role. So why would we include a bunch of information on our resume that is extraneous and doesn't help the recruiter see how qualified we are? How can recruiters love our resumes instead? Sharing relevant information is where the 5R framework comes into play. And that is to reframe our work experience so that it is relevant and it relates to our target job, that it reinforces skills required and desired of us in our target job, and it resonates with the reader, the recruiter. Reframing is particularly important for career changers. We want to ask ourselves with every piece of information that we want to include on our resume, does this help show that I'm qualified for the role? If it doesn't help, then we leave it out. But what about older work experience? Does that become irrelevant simply with the passage of time? Many of us have a knee-jerk reaction to old work experience. We just start chopping because we assume that 
If it's old, it's irrelevant. But this isn't always the best course of action, particularly if you have older skills that you want to bring forward because you're applying to a job where these are, again, relevant skills. And just chopping work experience that's older doesn't really help the recruiter get an understanding of how you got your footing in your career either. See my videos about beating ageism as well as writing a resume to return to an old job? These are both linked in the description below. We have the option of using a highlight section either at the beginning of our resumes or near the bottom at the end of our work experience section to highlight our best accomplishments from a certain time period, perhaps your earlier career, or to highlight accomplishments from across your entire career that showcase your qualifications for your target job. If you're a career changer, you might be interested in this video as well as this video, both linked in the description below. So you managed four projects. What does this mean? Is that many? Is that a few? What were the results of these projects? Too many questions, too little time. Recruiters hate meaningless metrics. So often we feel pressured to include quantifiable accomplishments, highlighting metrics and numbers on our resume. After all, it's what we've been told to do, right? But this pressure can lead us down the road of including a metric just for the sake of including a metric. And often these metrics lack meaning. And when a metric or quantifiable accomplishment lacks meaning, there's nothing a recruiter can really do with it. And when we include metrics without meaning, we expose ourselves to interpretation. And interpretation might not always be positive. So what can we do to make recruiters love our resume instead? Metrics and quantifiable accomplishments help when they help. Sometimes they don't make sense and they shouldn't be used. Like in instances where they might diminish our work or measure something that really shouldn't be measured. But if you are using quantifiable accomplishments on your resume, just like with any other type of accomplishment you include on your resume, you need to provide context. The context is critical because it helps the recruiter understand the impact of your work. When writing your accomplishment bullets on your resume, I like to recommend the rack approach. So lead with the results and then follow it up with the action that you took to get that result and some context that gives some meaning to that result. This framework will help make sure that you're not only highlighting the results of your work and the outcome of your work, but also the impact. You can check out this video mentioned earlier about writing accomplishment statements. What are you hiding here? Recruiters hate when you conceal career blemishes. If you're a makeup wearer, you are probably pretty proficient in concealing a pimple whenever it pops up. But when it comes to our resume, the most common career blemish is a career gap. When job seekers are trying to cover up career gaps, they often turn towards using a functional resume to do the work. When we go towards a functional resume, that means we're moving away from a reverse chronological resume. Recruiters hate this. The reason is functional resumes really stress your skills that you have acquired over the totality of your career, rather than showing when you've used the skills under specific jobs. This goes back to the necessity for context. Recruiters need to understand the context in which you achieved and demonstrated the skills you claim to have. Part of this is done by knowing where and when you did that. So how can we get recruiters to love our resumes? Always, 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 always use a reverse chronological resume, never a functional resume. For more information on why functional resumes are a bad idea, you can check out this video, which is linked in the description below. Now, how do we handle career gaps anyway? They should really be addressed head on. How much information you share about your career gap is up to you. But I want to encourage you to keep your personal information confidential. We don't want to expose ourselves to unnecessary bias because we happen to share a little too much information. For a career gap that you're currently in, you can use a simple one-line explanation starting from the date that your last role ended to present. And that one line would read, ready for next role as target role. You can expand this a bit further if you were laid off in your previous role, and then the line would read something like, ready for next role as target role following previous company name, restructuring. If you've done anything during the gap, like taking courses to upskill or refresh or to learn new skills, or you filled the time by doing something that was job adjacent, like taking on one-off projects or volunteering, you can mention these by turning the one line approach into more of a bulleted list. So this could read something like, ready for next role as target role, completed professional development with courses like course name, course name, and course name, contributed to type of project that resulted in, 
at a result or facilitated result slash outcome slash project as volunteer with organization name. You worried about the ATS, but it's me who's reading your resume. Recruiters hate when your resume disregards the reader. Because of so much of the misinformation these days going around about resumes and job search, often many of us feel compelled to try to make our resume ATS friendly or use one of those flashy resume templates, which we talked about earlier. These types of resumes almost always disregard the human reader. When we're writing our resumes, the human reader's experience should be prioritized above all else. This means your resume is easy to read and easy to get important information from fast. What this doesn't mean is a resume jam packed with keywords that aren't anchored to any context or a resume that tries to grab readers attention through flashy design rather than sharing how you're actually qualified for the job. Use a simple structure and when in doubt, use black font against a white page. And when you do use keywords, make sure that they're linked to or included in a sentence that showcases your qualifications. Can you even do this job? Recruiters hate when you don't show that you're qualified. A surefire way for how to get your resume from being in front of and read by a recruiter and sent to file 13 instead is by not showing that you're qualified for the job to which you're applying. Nothing wastes a recruiter's time more than a resume that doesn't show that you're qualified. You may not even know that you're not showing that you're qualified. A few of the missteps that lead to improperly showing qualifications include using a general resume. Catch-all resumes simply do not work. Using a resume that emphasizes responsibilities instead of accomplishments and applying for jobs that are much more senior to your current career level. So how can we get recruiters to love our resume? We never want to use a general resume. General resumes try to tell too many stories at once and so they don't properly showcase how we're qualified for our target job. This is why a target job is so important. It allows you to write a resume that is tailored and focused towards that target and therefore best showcases your qualifications. It also helps make sure that you apply for jobs for which you're actually qualified. As we talk about so frequently in these videos, we want to make sure that we use accomplishments to demonstrate our qualifications. Listing a bunch of responsibilities simply does not demonstrate how we are qualified and doesn't give any proof of the skills that we're claiming. We've talked a lot about what recruiters hate, but you know what they really, really love? when you message them after you've applied for one of their open roles with your new and improved resume that you built by implementing the tips from this video. So I recommend watching this video next to help guide you through messaging recruiters after you apply for their role to help you get noticed.